<laughs> Again, in the early 70s, I was asked, I was told by someone who was then my manager uh, that I was missing out on a big audience in Australia. They said, you're just playing to the middle class audiences, you always have. Uh, your, the, the, the big working class audience doesn't go to the theatre, they go to the clubs, the football clubs, where they have the gambling machines. And there's a huge one in Sydney, and they can afford to pay Sinatra and Tammy Davis and all those people to come out and perform there. And he said, uh, I think you should play one of those clubs. I said, I'd be terrified. I said, they'd boo me off the stage if I came on dressed up as Edna. Uh, he said, well, it's, he mentioned a, a figure. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I had thought about it. <laughs> and I thought, how can I explain Edna to these people? So I invented a an imaginary club secretary called Les Patterson. And Les came on in a powder blue suit with a few stains on it and a big wide tie and platform shoes, which believe it or not were ubiquitous in the early 1970s, slightly flared trousers. And he said, uh, oh, good evening fellas, ladies and gentlemen, he said, look, we did have a, we had a love, Shirley Bassey was going to be performing tonight, but unfortunately her plane has been delayed. Uh, and definitely, she said, <laughs> no Malaysian jokes, I don't suppose, appropriate. <laughs> and uh, luckily, saving the day, an ordinary woman from Melbourne who was up here on a holiday has offered to step <laughs> into the bridge. So uh, I'd like you all to give her the clap she so richly deserves. <laughs> And that explained Edna. Uh, how I managed to do that quick change from the announcement to the entrance of Edna, I'm afraid, is lost in the mists of memory. <laughs> but anyway, it went on, went on very, very well, and I realized that this is a popular audience I needed. I didn't want a whole lot of people feeling superior, you know. So. Les was born, and I kept him in the act. His teeth got worse, his stains got more indelible, <laughs> and his expectorations <laughs> more copious. <laughs> and these days, Les can spit as far as the fifth row. <laughs> and even recently in Manchester, right across a very wide orchestra pit. <laughs> But um, he's an amusing character to do because he is, you see, he's extremely dirty. And he tells stories which I wouldn't dream of telling anybody. <laughs> and if he were any cleaner, he would be offensive, you see. He is so excessive, so excessive, and I'm watching, you see, I like to look at the audience, as you must. And if old ladies are smiling, reluctantly at first, and then you've got, it's all right. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on people, you know. Mm. You lose some, of course. Unfortunately, there's an empty seat, or someone leaves, and you have to tell the audience, explain that they're from Switzerland. You know. <laughs>